here we go. When you do a hypothesis test, what could happen? What are all the possible ways this thing could go down? A really nice way to describe that is what's called a truth table. And a truth table is simultaneously showing everything that could happen regarding what's actually going on and the decision that we make with our test. We have this table here. So the truth, this is a thing that's hard to know. What I mean when I say the truth is is either the null is going to be true or the alternative is going to be true. So this first column here is representing the scenario where the null is true. Uh, the second column is maybe the null isn't true and the alternative is true. Just like you never know if your parameter is within your confidence interval, under no circumstances will we ever know if the null is true or the alternative is true. So I should really say impossible to know for sure. So those are the two scenarios regarding the truth of our hypotheses. And then so we do our best to do some science to figure out what's going on. So we do a hypothesis test and that hypothesis test ends up with a decision, which is one of either two things. Either you reject the null or you do not reject the null. There's four different scenarios that can happen when you're doing a hypothesis test. Each one of these squares is representing one way this whole thing could play out. So let's look at this top left one. This box up here is the scenario where the null is actually true and our hypothesis test ends up rejecting it. Is that the correct decision or is that an incorrect decision? Correct, right? So the null is actually true. That's what's happening. And we end up rejecting it. Is that what we want to do? No. So when you reject the null, you're in scientific terms saying that you don't think that it's true. So rejecting the null when it's true is an error. So it's an incorrect decision. And it has a name. It's called a type one error. What about if the null was true and your decision was to not reject it? You made a type two error? Be careful. So the null is true and then we end up not rejecting it. We made the right call. We got it right. We made the right call. Exactly. We made the right call. He called this the correct decision. So when the null is true, you can either get it right or you can mess it up. You never know for sure what happened, but there are probabilities of this. And the probability of a type one error is alpha. The alpha level is the probability of getting a type one error. It's the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis hypothesis when it's true. So let's look at the other scenarios that could happen. Okay, so maybe the alternative was true. If the alternative was true and we reject the null, was that the right thing or the wrong thing? The right thing, I think. It is the right thing. Yeah, you're exactly right. That's another correct decision. We got it right. The last one would be if the alternative was true and we didn't reject the null. That's a type of error called a type two error. I'll just mention that that happens with a probability called beta. The type Type one error corresponds to your significance level. The type two error is harder to calculate than the type one error. Probability of this correct decision is called the power of a test. It's a good thing when your alternative is true, the power is the ability to detect something that's going on. You know, we're not in a, an actual example, which makes it a little bit harder to think about. Uh, I'm about to look at an example of this, but does anybody have any questions of what we're looking at here, this truth table is. Great. Example I want to look at is if you're taking this COVID antibody test. It's a test that is going to make a determination of whether you have antibodies inside of you, which basically is indicating you've had the virus in the past. Uh, why would anyone do that? Figure out if they've had the virus in the past. Whether or not you've had it two months ago or three months ago. To know if you have immunity to the virus? or yeah, They're not saying that it's guaranteed you have immunity in the past, but with virus viruses in general, the way they behave, when you've had them in the past, a lot of times that means that you have immunity to it. So people that were working with the general public, if they could take this test, that would be useful information. So, okay, so truth with regards to everybody on earth is that either they have antibodies present or they don't. And the null is a scenario where nothing's going on. So the null is like you don't have antibodies present. So statistical terms, not having antibodies is going to mean the null is true here. Whereas if you do have antibodies inside of you, then the alternative is true. 
again, you're not ever going to know this with 100% certainty. I mean, you could know it with a very, very, very high degree of certainty, but we don't know with 100% certainty. So you take the test and the test is either going to say that you are positive for these antibodies or you're negative for these antibodies. And so if it tells you you're positive for them, what does that mean in terms of the null hypothesis? What decision is the test making and either rejecting the null or not rejecting the null? Rejecting would be the rejecting? Null. Yeah, it's rejecting the null. Yep. So if you don't have antibodies, the null is true. If your test tests positive, was that good? That's not good. That's not good. Yeah, that's that type one error. And so if the test tests negative, that's the do not reject. So if you don't have antibodies and the test tests negative, is that good or bad? Or correct or incorrect, I should say. Yeah, it's correct. Yep, that's correct. Yep. If you actually do have antibodies and the test test positive, that's a correct decision. And if the truth is you do have antibodies and you don't reject the null, that's that type two error. So what can go wrong can go wrong in these different types of ways. And they are quite different in terms of the risks and the consequences of them. And so to better understand that, something I might ask you to do interpret the following. Describe what a type one error means for this particular situation. Explain it not using stat terms. When you do this, you're going to be talking about antibodies and your test results and the truth. So a type one error would be you test positive while the truth is that you don't have antibodies. And there's another name for this too. It's called a false positive. It's telling you that something is going on when really it's not. It's, it's falsely saying that something is present when that thing actually isn't present. A type 2 error requires what kind of test result? You get a negative test result. Yeah, you test negative. Well, the truth is that you do have antibodies. Exactly. Which one of these is worse, do you think? It's situation dependent. Just like is this rare depends on the situation. If people test positive, they don't actually have it, they could think that they're immune when they're not. A type 1 error, you would like to make that as small as possible because in this case, it's putting people at risk. You might say, hey, since the probability of a type 1 error is their significance level, why not use a tiny significance level? What if you did something like this? Uh, hey, my significance level is that low. Holy moly, look at that. Uh, am I going to have type 1 errors very much? Nope. Incredibly unlikely that this will happen. So why don't we just do that all the time? Why don't make it even smaller? Would having the really small significance level make the type 2 errors more common? Yes, that is exactly what happens. These two probabilities are related. And if you made this very, very small, what you're doing is you make it very hard to reject, which means you're making it very hard to detect the antibodies. So what that means is when you have an alpha level that's so low, there's going to be a lot of the time where people are going to have the antibodies and you're not going to pick that up. So it's sort of this balancing act. If you make it really, really hard to reject, then there'll be more times when something is going on that you won't pick it up. Up. I think what's interesting in all this is that your p-value is not the probability of making a right decision or a wrong decision. It's related to your alpha level, your significance level. Cool. I'm going to show another example and have you interpret type 1 error and a type 2 error. Here's a problem about smokers. We're wondering, has the proportion of adult Americans who smoke decreased from 21%? Here's definitions of a type 1 error and a type 2 error. So can you translate what those mean in terms of this problem and this data? You should be talking about adult Americans smoking. Wouldn't the type 1 error be that exactly 21% of the population smokes, but we said that not exactly 21% smokes? Yeah, we want to mention the fact that we're testing to see if it decreased. There's a theory related to this. It's slightly better to describe the null as it hasn't decreased rather than it's exactly 21%. We use the math of it being exactly 21%, but this really needs to cover everything else. Either it has decreased, that's the alternative, or it has not decreased, that's the null. A type 1 error would be that you reject the nulls, you say has decreased, when what's true? But it hasn't decreased. Yeah, that's great, when the truth is it hasn't. What would the type 2 error look like? You conclude that the proportion of adults who smoke has not decreased when the truth is that it has decreased. 
Yeah, exactly. Yep, that false negative. You, if I'm going to stick with the language of our hypothesis testing, we fail to conclude the alternative. Going back to our decisions, we never talk about the null hypothesis at all. Either we say that we have enough evidence for the alternative, or we don't have enough evidence for the alternative. The type 1 error comes when you have enough evidence for the alternative. The type 2 error comes when you don't have enough evidence for the alternative. It's kind of similar to being innocent and guilty. You never say innocent. You always say guilty or not guilty. And when you make your decision, if you're wrong, you know which type of error you made. Whenever you reject the null, you know, okay, if I made an error, that would be the type 1 error. Or if you don't reject the null, you know that if you made an error, you made a type 2 error. You never actually know once you've rejected whether that's right or not. You just know the probabilities that